wanted to start off this presentation with a simple question. I'm going to pick on Sandy. Sandy, what would you do if you had $2,500? Chanel prices. Chanel prices? Uh -huh. I would do the same. Now, what if I told you you could buy a brand new car with $2,500? Chanel right? no. <laughs> prices? Well, other people in India would love to buy, a, most people would love to buy a brand new car with $2,500. And I want to begin off this presentation with a slide, with a video for all of you. New leads bring new inspiration. Roadster case that we had previously in that 
there was a high demand for the product before it was released. But created through buzz, through viral marketing, such as the internet, um, word of mouth, um, and websites. Now I'm going to delve into the company background. This company, Tata Motors, was located in Mumbai, India, and is the country's largest leading automobile company, raking in $7.2 billion in sales. Tata Motor was established in 1945 and introduced its first commercial vehicle in 1954. Tata Motors was also ranked within the top 10 corporations in India and plans to expand production to East Asia, South America, and Africa. Now I'm going to bring it over to my partner, Joey. Thanks. So I'm going to talk to you about the industry, the industry profile. As you can see, in India, there are only seven cars for every 1,000 people uh, in the country. This uh, means that the passenger vehicle market is, is in its very infancy. But there are going to be 2 million annual auto sales through 2010, which will double the amount of sales within the region. And then after that, sales will triple to 3 million auto sales for, for, from the end of 2010 until 2015. So basically, Tata Nano, Nano, the Tata Nano is going to ride the wave, or rather create the wave, as, ve as these vehicles become more uh, affordable to the Indian market in an ever-growing economy. So on the market trends, as you can see by the pie chart, the market is primarily dominated by commercial and passenger vehicles. Now on a side note, commercial vehicles are more like the trucks and buses, and this is a market that Tata Motors already dominates in the, in the Indian market. Passenger vehicles, on the other hand, or the family car market, is dominated by Suzuki, uh, Maruti Suzuki, which is Tata Motors' primary competitor within the industry. So not only will the Tata Nano penetrate this market and take over much of Suzuki's passenger vehicle market, it will also delve into the two-wheeler vehicle market. This will fulfill Ratan Tata's uh, uh, vision of transitioning the Indian vehicle industry from stacking a family on top of a motorcycle in a dangerous and precarious position and into a high-tech, safe, affordable car. So this leaves the passenger vehicle market with the highest potential growth. On to competition. At first glance, you might think the competition is classified like this, with the Maruti 800 being the primary competitor. However, Maruti has recently come out and stated that they do not want to compete with the Nano in the low and middle income segments. Instead, they are focusing on the Maruti Alto, the number one selling car in India right now. So, this shifts everything around such that the two-wheeler is the primary competitor in the market. The Maruti 800 only owns 5% of the uh, passenger vehicle market right now, when it used to own 30% in the past. So now that the two-wheeler is the primary competitor, this leaves the Nano with great opportunity to potentially uh, gain a near monopoly within the market. In terms of foreign competition, it's very difficult to, to invest in India. There are plenty of protectionist barriers that prevent inward foreign direct investment, as well as the license Raj. Now the license Raj is basically this bureaucratic mess brought back from the social, uh, socialist uh, history of India, where essentially you have to get, gain government permission before you can invest within the country. This is limiting uh, foreign competitors such as Toyota's uh, IQ and Volkswagen's Fiat from entering the market, allowing the Tata Nano to gain at least a two-year first mover advantage to weed out any competition in the market. So on to segmentation. We have geographics, demographics, and behavioral segments. At the geographic level, we've already discussed how the Tata Nano is tailored for the Indian market. More specifically, the urban market, where wages are rising the fastest in an economy averaging almost 9% GDP growth per year. However, the second generation Nano is projected to come about in just four years, and this will be able to meet the more stringent car te uh, crash test regulations established in Europe. This allows Tata Motors to pursue mainly the Eastern Europe market, the European market, where it can uh, ad adhere to these uh, stringent crash tests while also marketing a low uh, price affordable car. Finally, this low cost is the perfect model for developing countries who are trying to become an industrial power and go through that industrial revolution. The transition to the four-wheel car from starting from a two-wheel -wheel vehicle stacked with your family upon it to a four-wheel vehicle is a great opportunity in Eastern Asia, South America, and South Africa. On the demographics, 